Okay, so we are now continuing our discussion on uh, chapter 12 for the National Building Code of the Philippines where it is the general design and construction requirements. In section 1201, it has been defined here that buildings proposed for construction shall comply with all the regulations and specifications here in set forth governing quality characteristics and properties of materials methods of design and construction type of occupancy and classification all other matters relative to the structural design of all buildings and other structures not provided for in this chapter shall conform with the provisions of the National Structural Code of the Philippines as adopted and promulgated by the Board of Civil Engineering pursuant to the Republic Act No. 544 as amended otherwise known as the Civil Engineering Law. Then in Section 1202, it deals with the excavation, foundation, and retaining walls. A. Subject to the provisions of Articles 684 to 686 of the Civil Code of the Philippines on lateral and subjacent support, the design and quality of materials used structurally in excavation, footings, and in foundations shall conform to accepted engineering practice. B. Excavation and fields. Um, under that is first, excavation or fields for buildings or structures shall be so constructed or protected that they do not endanger life or property. Second, whenever the depth of excavation for any construction is such that the lateral and subjacent support of the adjoining property or existing structure thereon would be affected in a manner that the stability or safety of the same is endangered, the person undertaking or causing the excavation to be undertaken shall be responsible for the expense of underpinning or extending the foundation or footings of the aforementioned property or structures. Commonly, this will happen if um, you will be having your or constructing your structure in um, adjacent with an adjacent property, something that something like this for example if you will be constructing um, ambassador house and then given that this house does not exist yet existed yet and then saint bottles house already existed so you need to be careful in doing your excavation and fills along this line so that you won't um, create any damage along the um, walls of this um, adjacent property. Um, commonly, if you will be doing this, then you will be required to do a firewall. Third is excavation and other similar disturbances made on public property shall, unless otherwise excluded by the building official, be restored immediately to its former condition within 48 hours from the start of such excavation and disturbances by whosoever caused such excavation or disturbance says disturbance so basically you only have two days to um, do or complete the excavation and to avoid further disturbances because um, you do not know um, 
how it would affect the other properties that surround uh, the structure that you are constructing. C. Footings, foundations, and retaining walls. First, footings and foundations shall be of the appropriate type of adequate size and capacity in order to safely sustain the superimposed loads under seismic or any conditions of external forces that may affect the safety and stability of the structure. It shall be the responsibility of the architect or the engineer to adapt the type and design of the same in accordance with the standard set forth by the secretary. Second, whenever or wherever there exists in the site of the construction an abrupt change in the ground levels or level of the foundation such that instability of the soil could result, retaining walls shall be provided and such shall be of adequate design and type of construction as prescribed by the secretary. As you can see in this photo, um, here is an example of a retaining wall and um, it's important. So, if you need to design your retaining wall that can really um, retain, of course, the soil back here because if not, then erosion will happen or the fa failure of your retaining wall design will happen most likely and for sure you have seen um, different types of retaining walls and this one is a different one which can be considered as a creep block wall retaining wall and um, let's try to check if we can find or I can show you a retaining wall within Negros Oriental so here is another example of a failure for retaining wall. Um, this is in Talisa A. Cebu. So you can see how important a retaining wall uh, would be in protecting not only from uh, the roadside but um, for any construction that you will be do doing and then you are um, avoiding the upper side of the soil to get eroded so that's the time that you need to put up a retaining wall but make sure that you are going to design it efficiently because um, if it will be substandard or it will be uh, just a uh, effectively designed one then a massive um, <laughs> failure will happen and as an engineer of course you will be liable of the result this one is another example of a retaining wall where they no longer have used concrete but um, a mere stone and it's another type of uh, retaining wall and later on you'll be discussed what are those kind of retaining walls so like this um, which is in Kainta same thing that we are using on the mere stone without the concrete. Now let us proceed to section 1203 which is all about veneer. So by definition veneer is an unstructural facing of brick, concrete, tile, metal, plastic, glass or other similar approved materials attached to a backing or structural components of the building <coughs> for the purpose of ornamentation 
protection or enclosure that may be adhered, integrated, or anchored either on the interior or exterior of the building or structure. To gi give you an idea about quick veneer, so here is the example as to how it is being installed. So, for the design requirements of a veneer, it shall comply with the following. First, veneer shall support no load other than its own weight and the vertical dead load of veneer immediately above. Just like the photo that I recently showed you, which is this one. So, this brick veneer shall not support any load rather than for its own weight and the uh, weight of <coughs> the brick above it's um like for the next brick above it then surfaces to which veneer is attached shall be designed to support the additional vertical and lateral loads imposed by the veneer. Next is consideration shall be given to differential movements of the supports including those caused by temperature changes, shrinkage, creep, and deflection. Next is Adhered veneer and its backing shall be designed to have a band to the supporting element sufficient seismic effects and the total assemblage. Then, anchored veneer and its attachment shall be designed to resist horizontal forces equal to twice the weight of the veneer. Then, Anchor supports and ties shall be non-combustible and corrosion resistant. Now let us proceed to section 1204 which is enclosure of vertical openings. <clears throat> vertical openings shall be enclosed depending upon the fire system requirements of a particular type of construction as set forth in this code. For elevator enclosures, walls and partitions enclosing elevators and escalators shall be of not less than the fire resistive construction required under the types of construction. Enclosing walls of elevator shafts may consist of wire glass set in metal frames on the entrance side only. So, if you are going to observe how the mechanical works in an elevator, then um, it would look like this. Even if the elevator is of different designs or elevator system is of different designs, then most likely the requirement um, should comply according to the in uh, in BCP requirement. Elevator shafts extending through more than two stories shall be equipped with an approved means of adequate ventilation to and through the main roof of the building. Provided that in this building, housing groups F and G occupancies equipped with automatic fire extinguishing systems throughout. Enclosure shall not be required for escalators. So, um, mostly like malls, um, which are the ones that uses escalators it will look like this without the enclosure provided further that at the top of the escalator opening at each story shall be provided with draft curtain 